My dear friends, our study is from the book, second book of Kings and chapter 2. When we see here that Elijah was to be taken to the Lord, the Lord was to come and, and gather Elijah unto himself. And Elisha was with him. Elisha knew all about this. And Elisha, the one who was to take over from Elijah, he'd spent time with Elijah, learning from him, being prepared by him. And in many ways, Elisha had become dependent upon Elijah. And there are some deep, deep lessons here for ourselves. That, yes, it is fine to have those who, who will stand with us, those who we can learn from. But a time will come when that person is no longer there. And it is God himself who we are totally dependent upon. Let us turn to the word now. It came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, we are told, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Tarry here. I pray thee, for the Lord have sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as my soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. Yes, Elijah. Oh, he was testing out Elisha here. He knew that he was going to be taken. But Elisha too had had that revelation from God that this was the day of the parting of the ways. And Elisha was not going to be moved with by anything which Elijah looked to prevent, try to discourage or prevent Elisha from coming with him. So they went on their way. And when they arrived at Bethel, oh, there were prophets there. Yes, there were many, many prophets in those days. And they said unto Elisha, oh, did you, did you not know? Uh, that the Lord will take thy master. There was recognition here that Elijah was the main prophet of the day. And that the Lord will take thy master from thy head today. And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here. Oh, yes, the next next test is it where I pray thee for the Lord have sent me to Jericho. It was quite a remarkable day, it's a, this tour around. And he said, as the Lord liveth, and as my soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And when they arrived there, the very same thing happened. They said unto him, to the prophets there, so we had prophets of Bethel, we had prophets of Jericho, both had the same message to Elisha. They would also, by revelation, had received this message from God, that this was the day of the parting of Elijah. And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah then said to Elisha, Terry, here. For the Lord has sent me to Jordan. Now that is very significant. 
sent me to Jordan. That great river, that vast river, that river which had played its part at the crossing of the Jordan at the time of Joshua. When the people of God crossed that river into the promised land of Canaan. And there were there those there who went to stand and watch this. There were prophets. Oh, they were watching this. They wanted to see what was going on. And they, Elijah and Elisha, stood by Jordan. And what happened? Oh, it was in the supernatural here that happened. Here was the, the, the prophet of God, the one about to be taken, and the prophet of God, the one who was to become the main prophet after Elijah. Both standing there. And what did Elijah do? He was going to cross that river, that vast river, that river which had parted its waters once before in the days of Joshua. And its waters were to be parted again. Why? Because Elijah believed God. Elijah was going to act in that belief, the God was the God of the impossible, the God of the supernatural, and the God who would make the way clear to go across. He took off, he took his mantle. And what did he do with that mantle? He used it in faith. He stepped out in faith. He believed his God. And he smote the waters. And they divided hither and thither. So that they too went over on dry ground. It was going through with God. Elisha, as he went with Elijah, stepped, as it were, through into a different realm with God. He entered into that which God was going to lead Elisha into when Elijah was no longer around. Because Elisha had to be able to be in that living relationship himself with God. Completely dependent upon God. No longer dependent upon Elijah. And was there ready at Elijah's going to prove God. What is your Jordan? Have you crossed your Jordan? Are you living in that supernatural which God wants his people to live in? The supernatural faith, that supernatural believing, that supernatural acting. The God is still the God of the supernatural. And that's what he wants in these days, to see those who will believe, those who will act, but only can they act because it is the Spirit of God within them. The Spirit of God, the fire of the Spirit of God was in Elijah. Elijah who stood against the prophets of Baal. The Elijah 
who proves God by calling down the fire of God. And God had destroyed the prophets of Baal. God had destroyed that which was not to his honor and to his glory. And Elisha had also to be able to receive the same fire as Elijah. And he stepped out in faith with him and crossed the Jordan. And there they went. And what happened afterwards? Elisha had seen such a great working of God that he too wanted to see that great working of God in him and through him to the glory of God. Is that what you want? To see God working in you and through you by his Spirit to God's glory. Not for your glory, for the glory of man. Only for the glory of God himself. And he asked Elijah. Elijah because Elijah said, What? Ask what I shall do for thee. For thee before I am taken away from thee. Yes, no matter how many years or what length of time they'd spent together. There was now that parting. And Elijah wanted Elisha to receive something of that which he himself had from God. Knowing that only God himself could give that same gift, that same life. That same fire to Elisha. So what did Elisha ask for? Not for material gifts. Because Elijah had none to give him. He asked, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Not a spirit in the natural, anything to do with the natural. Here of Elijah. But the Spirit of God, the same Spirit of God that was in Elijah. And they didn't just ask for the same measure. He asked for a double portion. And there was Elijah saying, Oh, you've asked a hard thing here, Elisha. But should you see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. If not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold there what appeared, and take note of this, a chariot of fire and horses of fire, having come from the very glory, having come from the presence of God to gather Elijah and take him to heaven. But the word here that stands out is fire, a fire from heaven. And it is that same fire that is needed today in those prophets of God, in those Ministers of God, in those evangelists and teachers and apostles, it's the fire of God that's needed. Otherwise, we're just damp squibs without a message because there is no life in that message. And they were parted. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it. He met the condition, he saw it. And he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof 
and he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. Yes, Elijah, who he had been dependent upon, was gone. But yet now was an opportunity to see what he had learnt from Elijah, to put it into practice, and that called upon faith, that called upon acting in the impossible. And he did, he did act in the impossible. Because what did he do? He'd asked for a double portion and undoubtedly received that double portion of the Spirit which was the same Spirit in Elijah. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit which came from God himself, came from the Father. That Spirit which was to come and to be in Jesus during his earthly ministry, that Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that the Father sent, that at the day of Pentecost, and that same Spirit that acted in Elijah and Elisha, is of still the same Spirit that God gives today to those who want, those who are not for selfish motives, but for the kingdom of God and for the glory of God. And he took in faith, did Elisha, the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell, yes, from him and smote the waters because they crossed and the waters had come back together. And what Elijah done, Elisha believed that he too would do. And said, ah, he said this to God himself in prayer and in faith and in believing. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Because before then, Elisha, it seems, did not have that living relationship with the living God which Elijah had. He had to receive the life of God. He had to receive the Spirit of God. He had to receive the fire of God on a personal level, not to receive something as it were, from Elijah, he had to receive it directly from God. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they were parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. He acted in faith, he believed, and God answered. God couldn't do anything else but answer because Elisha had asked of God in faith. Oh, in these days the God will stare afresh. Those who have the same Holy Spirit within them and the same Holy Spirit and fire as was within Elijah and Elisha, and that they will go forth in the power of the Spirit. To what? To challenge, and to pull down and to destroy the very works of the devil wherever they manifest themselves. And in particular, that which dares to manifest itself and calls itself Christianity and church in is in an absolute mockery unto a holy and righteous God because it is bringing forth the ideas of man rather than proclaiming the word of God in the power of God 
through the Holy Spirit, through the fire of God upon the Word, and that through intercessory prayer too, the fire will be called down, and that which dares to defy God will have to give way, just as the waters of Jordan were parted through the actions of faith in the fire of God, both by Elijah and then Elisha. And today, we as those who follow on from Elijah and Elisha, that the present day Elijahs and Elishas will go forth with the same ferocity, the same fire, the same power, the same believing, and see that the kingdom of God is advanced, is brought in in these days for the glory of God and the gathering of those who still to be gathered for the kingdom of God, so that Jesus Christ the eternal Son of God shall see of the travail of his soul and be satisfied to the glory of God the Father. Thank you for being with me. God bless you.